Hi again, I'm Jack Lessenberry, and welcome back to Politics and Prejudices, the podcast. As you may know, this is an evolution of the columns I did and the radio commentaries I did for many years, so please listen, watch, and join, and tell your friends. Well, it should be an especially interesting podcast today with one of Michigan's most fascinating personalities. Jeffrey Figers, Michigan's most successful medical malpractice lawyer, became nationally and internationally famous in the 1990s for his defense of Jack of Orkin in five trials and before the world's media. He defied the odds in the party establishment to win the Democratic nomination for governor in 1998 and beat what he believes was a politically driven attempt by the Bush administration to convict him of campaign finance violations. Now, he says what he needs is a clear vision, what we need is a clear vision for 2020. Jeffrey, welcome to the podcast. Why don't you run for president? Why do they call it podcast? I think because um, they're the people, the pod people who control us all, manipulate our <laughs> brains into listening to them. But I don't know what pod means. What does that mean? I'm not, I'm not tech savvy. I have a, still have a, a, a flip I, phone, but what is I, podcast? I think because when they started, people listened on their iPods. Oh. So don't ask what an iPod is either, okay. but that's what, just what it's called. I see. So now that and now they listen on their phones, is that it? They listen on their they, phones. In fact, their they, that's all they watch. And the fillings it? in their teeth. That's yeah. right. Uh, that radio is pretty much dead. People it's, listen to various podcasts. I've kept my flip phone. I I can't get Netflix or Amazon Prime because uh, it won't hook up into my TVs, and so I'm I'm a Neanderthal living. Um, comfortably naive and uh, ignorant. There's rumors you even read books and have time for your family. I actually read uh, magazines. I don't have enough time for books, although I read the best book I've read, I, I, because I read all the time as right. as, as what I do. I, I, I rarely read for pleasure. And somebody gave me a book that was so fascinating I couldn't put it down. It's called In the Shadow of Hoffa. Wow. And it is amazing. It's written by Chucky O'Brien's Steps- adopted son, stepson, mm. um, and uh, he he became a, a Harvard law professor. Wow. And he really rejected O'Brien and, and became part of the Bush administration. Uh, and he wrote the most fascinating book I have read in years. Uh, there, the, the other book I read recently, or I think I gave it to you or you gave it to me somewhere, sometime in a great city about Detroit. That's right. That's but right. This David book, Moranis. Yeah, yeah. This book, and, I'm, and the author's name, somebody can check it in the, uh, uh, the booth. He is amazing. It, and and I, I don't believe, I think this might be his first book, but this, and it just came out. In the Shadow of Hoffa. In the Shadow of Hoffa. It is, it is absolutely riveting. It what, is riveting. What does he tell us? What happened to Jimmy Hoffa? What he thinks happened to Jimmy Hoffa? Well, it was, it's clear that Hoffa was cl- killed by the mob. Right. Um, it, it, and, and he does not believe, although he did believe, that uh, uh, Chucky O'Brien was in on it. Chucky O'Brien's a dupe, but Chucky O'Brien had two sides. He was Hoffa's right-hand guy. He was Hoffa's gopher. And he was also um, the Detroit mobs. Uh, because ah. of his mother, he was in with the Detroit mob. He was half Sicilian. Uh, the Jackalonies, uh, uh, Uncle Tony, he called him. So he was in on both sides, and he saw it, and both sides trusted him, although he could never be a made man. Um, and clearly, uh, Hoffa went off the tracks when they pardoned him. Nixon right. pardoned him. Frank Fitzsimmons took over, and Hoffa could not fathom that uh, they were going to keep him out. And he, right. he kept telling everybody he was going to blow the whistle uh, if you recall, the Central States Pension Fund, they, exactly. they were they were they were robbing that blind, right? And and Hoffa was in on it too. Um, he doesn't glorify Hoffa, but he m- makes quite clear that, that that there aren't any more labor leaders like Hoffa. That he was no. a genius in that respect. But it's it's the most fascinating book I have ever well, ever have to, read on this. I'm going to be on a plane later this week. I'm going to get it. I couldn't so literally wonderful. couldn't put it down. That's just fascinating. We will we will look we'll look that up. It hasn't but gotten enough publicity. So well, it was nice to talk about something else other than the presidential campaign. Yeah. What do you think? Do you about know? It? Do you know? Um, Bloomberg calls himself Blumberg. Did you notice that? Yes. That's it, right. It, it, they keep calling it, his company calls himself calls them Bloomberg, but he calls himself Blumberg. That's the European pronunciation. Well, I mean, I don't know which is correct, but I assume he knows how to c- pronounce his, his own, own name. name. I think if you got his money, you could right. pronounce your name. You could pronounce it Schwartz if you well, wanted. Well, to. no, but it's you know, Cheney, it, it, Cheney was not Cheney. His no. name is Cheney. Exactly. But he did pronounce it Cheney, even though right. it, 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 his dad didn't. Um, so, but I wonder why Bloomberg calls himself Blumberg, but call, allows his company to call him Mike 
Bloomberg. I don't know. Probably because everybody would pronounce it that way anyway. So what? Yeah. The, what and I, I got some inside information that Buddha Jai uh, is Buddha Judge. Buddha Judge. Buddha Jai. Whatever. Mm-hmm. He's most fearful of. Uh, uh, well, they all are really of of Bloomberg. Um, I would be if, if it's Bloom. I think it's Bloomberg or uh, or Biden. I don't care what. Uh, Michael Moore says, I don't think Bernie's going to get nominated. I just don't. I mean, it, it, I think anybody can beat him, though. Can anybody they, can you know beat what Trump? they'll do? They'll do a Hillary on Warren. So that won't be good. Right. But they can't do it on the others. So you th- who do you think would be the strongest Democrat against Trump? I don't know. I think all, you know, I th- Biden isn't that bad. I don't think Bloomberg's that bad. Uh, uh, Buddha judge would be good. A- any con when they finally, when you finally get to make the choice, right? And you finally can compare and contrast whoever the Democrats put up. What I don't understand is that, notwithstanding the most obviously corrupt presidential regime in the history of the United States, the man who said he was going to drain the swamp has more criminals who have left his cabinet and his administration than any other president, and he's clearly, if you read this uh, last book, a, a truly stable uh, a truly genius. Truly stable genius, that's yeah. right. Um, he, is, he, is, he is a nutcase. Uh, how anyone can continue to adhere to him, I always, and it's always the simplest explanation. They keep looking for some kind of economic explanation, and the only explanation I can come up with is racism. Because it it's right. never that complicated. Nothing is that complicated. Right. N- n- to allow anyone to to suspend disbelief in reality and continue to to uh, say or go into a voting booth and vote for that man, notwithstanding the economy, which I'm sure he has nothing to do with, since he claimed that he had uh, uh, he cured cancer recently. Right. He claims success, and even though he's cut more funds for. Uh, in the environment, in terms of scientific research, he's right. he's done more harm to anything good that you could possibly imagine, and uh, the fact that the economy continues to hum along, which he cl- claims responsibility for, although it's clearly an upward trajectory from from Obama, right? Clearly, right. Um, and I'm not saying that it, 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 he has nothing to do with it anymore, but it, it, the economy and then racism. That's it. But racism is at the heart of it. It has to be. What else would there be? He's he's an ignorant man. He's he's a crooked guy. He's he's a liar. He wouldn't instill inspiration in anyone. Well, what else? Might... Could, what else could it be other than his his overt racism and xenophobia? Well, that explains his appeal to Billy Bob and the double wides. But why do all these Republicans who are highly educated, who should know better, people like Mitch McConnell, why are they? Backing him like uh, robots. First of all, you have to understand who actually gets into politics, which are the the weakest scumbags on the face of the earth, because they really basically don't want to do anything else. And uh, Frank Kelly called politics showbiz for ugly people. It really is. I mean, these are people who you really even wouldn't want to elect to your your class president. And so, if you understand that basically they're they're in the best job they ever have or will have, unless they can skim something off after they leave, and they arrange for that regularly. Um, they are afraid, and, and this sounds like an easy explanation, but it's the fact of the matter. They're afraid of being primaried um, right. in, in the Republican primary, because in both the Republican and the Democratic primary, the extremes of both parties vote. And in the Republican Party, the far right extreme vote, none of the middle votes so if you do anything to offend these crazy lunatics on the right-wing fringe, you are very likely, because these people really vote with a vengeance right. in the Republican primary. They'll find someone crazier than you. They will find somebody crazier than Mitch McConnell, and that's why they keep their mouth shut. But that inevitably then means that they're cowards and that they believe then uh, they're, trying to, they're, they're self-protective. So you put them in a foxhole, and uh, the enemy is fighting, and you couldn't depend upon them to defend you, and you can't depend upon them to defend our country. Right. Um, they're inherently cowards, and they should be drummed out as, as cowards and traitors, which is what they are. 
Is the country going to be able to recover from this once Trump, no. Trump is defeated? We're, we're a substantially different country than I thought we were. This is, it, it won't resemble the same place. Uh, it, how could it? How could it? You, you'd have to root out these people. I mean, these people are in there. There's, there's at least, what, 51 or 52 Republican senators 53. who won't open their mouths. Right. So how do you root them out? I right. mean, that's ridiculous. It's absolute. Well, if they get defeated, they will be out in, in droves. And, and you're going to see, this is all about, by the way, it's not about impeachment. This is all about the effect on the certain number of senators who are up for re-election, who may right. su be subjected to uh, a defeat, not from the Republican primary, but in the main election because of what they're doing. It's likely, for instance, Colorado, clearly that guy's going to go. Right. I would hope in Maine that uh, she Collins. goes, be yeah. not be not only because of her cowardice, but with her thing with Kavanaugh. Right. But, uh, she was a deciding vote to put yeah. Kavanaugh on the Supreme Court. I know, I know people don't believe it's possible, but Mitch McConnell could go. They don't like him. In, no, Kentucky. In Kentucky. He could go. Well, that would be a big signal. And, he, and, and Trump will not have, um, what do you call it, coattails. No. He will not have coattails if he wins. And I don't know how he wins. Anybody who says he's going to win Michigan again, by what did he win last time? Eight thousand votes. Ten thousand. No, of 5 that's not happening. No. I, I, I don't believe that's going to happen, and I'd be sh shocked if he wins Pennsylvania again. I don't think that's going to happen. No. Nope. So if he doesn't win Michigan or Pennsylvania, can he win Wisconsin? I don't think so. But would that put him over the top? I don't think so. Without Michigan and Wisconsin, who does he? What does he turn? How does he win? He'd have to win some state. Hillary won, and it's uh, not in the cards, really. I think. You spent some time in Arizona. I think Arizona is becoming more of a, a blue state. Yeah, so they say it's a purple state, purple and state. Uh, they got McSally there, who who said uh, uh, a reporter recently asked her. She's the appointed senator for after um, she lost her election, then and McCain they appointed her to yeah. McCain's seat. Um, so she could ease. I, I don't know if she's up for re-election now. I think she, she probably is. She's running is. against Mark Kelly, the astronaut yeah. husband. Of yeah, and she Giffords. could lose too. Yeah. And uh, what is it if if they flip four? Uh, then they take over, and that's right. that's all McConnell. McConnell cares about two things: winning re-election and winning the the majority. If he's in the minority, I'm not even sure he wants to be there. But no one talks about the fact that his wife Chu is in is in his uh, Trump's administration. Right, She's the right, right, right. Department of uh, Transportation. Nobody talks about that. No one. So it's an interlocking something. Well, I mean, it's just crooked. What about, what about Michigan? What about it? Well, how did, um, who's the, the Whitmer, how did she, I, 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 who was advising her to make a deal on no fault without also having a deal on the roads in place, exactly. on a quid pro quo? Who advised her of that? How did that happen? It just shows. I know who advised her. The lawyers, the the. the Michigan trial lawyers, these these brilliant nabobs who claim to have some knowledge. Of Aren't things. you I one can't of even them? identify them. Aren't you one of them? No, I'm not. They don't like me. <laughs> but yeah, so she. They're I, jealous. They're just inherently jealous. Would you agree she made a major mistake by. She originally said she wouldn't sign a budget without road funding, and then she caved in and did? Well, it's not the budget. She could have held the. the it, it was really the no fault. Right. I would have held the, the, the cards on the no fault. Stop the budget nonsense, and she can, she can, you know, she has the. I guess in Michigan we have uh, line item veto, so right. she can, she can do that. And I'm not sure to the extent that she caved in or didn't cave in, but she should have never given them no fault ever. She gave the Republicans no fault for what? You have to get something in return. Pretty much not. Most people think that we had the Senate majority, the, the House minority leader Yusuf Rabi in here, who said it's all a fraud. It's not going to. It's going to lower, it's not even going to lower rates. No. It gives it's people gonna, less protection. Way less protection. And when they find out, and when their protection runs out, right. God help us all, then who's going to pay for it? Right. Who's going to pay for it? Unbelievable what they've done. It's, uh, uh, it is a fraud, too. But it's a total fraud that you could buy. Everybody chooses. It, you only buy what you need. Right. Nobody thinks they need it until they need it. Nas right. Brooks Patterson, that. Exactly. He, he was, was he the was... single guy who kept it from um, being uh, 
uh, ripped up and, and, and thrown in the waste paper basket. That is no fault. Uh, Under Snyder. Quote, unquote, Cause, cause reform. Because he, he, he found knew. out. He found out. Right. He was in a terrible auto accident, and he <laughs> knew if he didn't have the coverage, he'd be broke That's and in right. the poorhouse. And his driver still is in, you know, permanently exactly. disabled. So, but but the, who's going to pay? Hmm. Who is going to pay? God help us all. I think it goes into effect in July. But yeah, we're gonna have a lot of a lot of people are going to be racked up and without anything to do. Is that do you have? Can you represent those people? Can they come to you? You know, I've been asked about that. No, I don't have enough. That's a policy decision that should have never happened in the first place. Um, all of those people are going to end up on the streets, and, and but right now they say not a word because they're going to go out and when it's offered, they're going to buy the lowest cost and the no fault which means the least protection. Right. And when they get in a terrible, terrible accident, God forbid, and they rack up millions of dollars and they only have 250000 in coverage, which is the lowest you're required to have, um, then what will happen to them? Nothing. What will happen to them? We've never thought about that. We've Nothing never ever. had that situation in this state. It's, uh, it's just awful. We've that, never that, had that situation. You know... <clears throat> Does this make has this ever made you tempted to run for state office again? No, I, it, you know I used to think about it, um, and I, I even toyed with the idea of the presidency. But who'd want to put up with these people? I mean, these people are not inspiring anymore right. in any degree whatsoever. They do not inspire me. They, the, it, it's not the way that I want to live the rest of my life. I think that these people are liars. <laughs> I don't even, I was watching this guy, Devin Nunes, who obviously, while he's sitting on the House Intelligence Committee, was conspiring with Lev Parnov and Giuliani to get Biden, and they were supposedly investigating this. That is, that's criminal. Oh, yeah. But the reason that uh, this can all go on is that Bill Barr is a criminal uh, in, in, in sheep's clothing, the uh, Attorney General, and Parnov said it, he said, the thing that made Trump dangerous is not anything that he did. It's Bill Barr being where he is. Because nothing, nothing will get investigated. Nothing. You can commit any crime in the name of Trump, and nothing will happen to you. Is Bill Barr even worse than Gonzalez? A thousand the... times. Hmm. Gonzalez even had, had some shame. Gonzalez was on the, uh, as I recall, um, either before or after the Texas Supreme Court, um, but e even then, he wasn't a total shill. Right. Um, Barr is a total, totally, total. Not just a shill. He's uh, he's he's assisting them, but in in a terrible way. You can't. Nunes for sure must have committed some crime, and he gets That's caught. Right. He says, and who believes? Uh, he he said, oh, well, some random caller to my cell phone. How did somebody, how did Shh. Lev Parnov get his cell phone number? It's just a lie. And, and people look at him on Fox television and think he's telling the truth. Mm. I looked at him and I said, Jesus, this guy's lying through his teeth. Shh. What about, you know, the one place we've always been extremely popular is the city of Detroit. They voted I, uh, That's the one, you, see, you said state office. Yeah. I could conceivably... Uh, um, become the mayor of the city of Detroit. That would be conceivable to me. That seems to me that I could get something done. It's 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 fathomable in terms of the 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 work that needs to be done, where it needs to be done, what needs to be done. The idea of running this state in this country is 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 a joke. I mean, who, who's running it really? It How do you is, think Duggan's doing? Duggan has always been what I called to be a functionary. He's he's a he's a, he gets things done in the sense that I think the city is cleaner. I think he's uh, um, cut the grass. Right. He's trying to plow the streets and pick up the garbage. Um, Tore down a lot of vacant. Right. I think that he's got his own problems that go way back from McNamara, and he's not a he's not. It, it's funny that we have a. A guy who's really a Republican as the Demo as the mayor of the city of Detroit. He's really a Republican from Livonia, but he couldn't um, get elected as a Republican. No, no, no. He, he just he called himself done. that. People don't talk about the fact that he was uh, uh, he was the campaign manager for what was his name, Mike Cox, who ran for the Republican governorship. He was uh, right. Duggan was his campaign. And manager. he was just, just a few state years attorney ago. general before that. That's right. So, so but. 
Um, of course, he has his own problems now. Do you... Well, he's always had those problems. You see, the problem with McNamara was they, they were about to get caught, but they had it all set up with the U.S. attorney, and Jennifer Granholm was in on that. And McNamara and, died. And McNamara died, and so, you know, kind of got brushed under the rug. Now with this thing with his mistress and uh, shoveling money there and with these demolition contracts, but who knows what's going to be right. done. Right, but you would think about at some point running for mayor of Detroit. Yeah. How, if you were, let's say you're mayor of Detroit, the big crying need is jobs. What do you do? How do you do that? Well, you make it very attractive for people to come here. You can't create jobs as the mayor of the city of Detroit. You're just going to make it very comfortable um, for people to, to come here and attractive to come here. People think, for instance, jobs are created by low taxes. If that was true, then nobody would ever go to New York City or Chicago. No, that's right. Angeles. That's right. Go to so, outer Mongolia. Yeah. What, what's that about? What kind of nonsense is that about? If people go to New York or Chicago or San Francisco or Los Angeles because it's fun to live there. Right. Not because there's low taxes. They have things like city services. Exactly. And and that's in, in in Michigan, it's always been, oh, well, we have to have more parking lots and we have to have more freeways and we have to have lower taxes. Utter and complete nonsense. That's what sounds like Bolsheviks would say and make it as unattractive to live in, in a place as possible. You make it as attractive right. to live in. For instance, I remember years ago toying with the idea and I said I'd legalize marijuana, which right. has been done now. Right. And and I, and I couldn't have decri I could decriminalize it in Detroit right. in order the police not to arrest anybody and I'd legalize prostitution. That's a no brainer. Right. But that's just for start because you wouldn't want to have the police um, wasting their time on victimless crimes. But right. would, and then also, of course, you have to uh, um, you have to have more people than just Dan Gilbert right. um, come to the city of Detroit and, and try to. See, I mean, I, I, Dan Gilbert's been great, I, and, I, and I don't think he's getting better. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious that he's not. What kind of press do we have here, though? I think he made an appearance recently at some event around Christmas, and he was there, and the press right. won't describe what he looked like or how, how right. he was. Why is that? What, is he entitled to that? He's a public figure. He owns sure. practically the entire city of Detroit. Exactly. But I read every article, and there wasn't one picture of him, nor did they describe what shape he was in. But he was in public. Did mm. you read that? I, I didn't know. I was out of town. I didn't know he'd made an appearance. I talked yeah, about his, making his another son, one in February. His son was honored at some... Right. Uh, um, it was at or near around Christmas, but it was a Jewish holiday. Right. And he made an appearance at Campus Martius, but they, they didn't describe him. That, so who's running the vast Gilbert Empire? Clearly, good, he's not. Good quote. No, he's not. Obviously, he's not. And they're not. They're not saying. And they right. say. And he. It's a wholly owned company by right. him. Uh, so I mean, technically, him and his wife run it, and they have these employees. But these employees are not going to take a risk with billions of dollars, which w would threaten their job. None of them will. This is not a typical situation where you've got a company with a board of directors. And the board of directors can appoint new CEOs and make decisions. Right. This is a wholly owned, closely held company by Dan Gilbert. And I don't know, under these circumstances where the, 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 the guy behind it, the guy who I think probably made all the important decisions, is, is gone, right. e effectively gone. Not, and, and it's not simply, <laughs> the, the reason you don't see him isn't because he's got physical disabilities. A lot of people have physical disabilities. You, when you have a stroke, that's in your brain. Right, okay? right. And you don't come out of that unscathed. Yeah, FDR did fine in a wheelchair, but it's, if your brain is... Uh, right, right. He didn't have a stroke. He did no. when he died, but right, right. Uh, uh, he had polio. Yeah, so so we don't know, and I, that's, I think, a failure of media, right? Nobody really knows what's going It's, a, it's a total knows. failure of the media. What kind of media is there here? The, the guy who literally owns the city of Detroit, they won't talk about. We don't know anything about his wife. We, we won't talk about it. About it. His a, wife's a very nice lady, but, but she's not going to be, a, I don't think she ever was set up to run that corporation no, so and make the decision. That why, that's why you don't see that Hudson site built. Right. Why isn't anybody saying anything about it? Because they're all sitting it's been, around. There's been a hole there for a year better. and a half, yeah, two years. No, nothing's happening. Uh, uh, not uh, that I can see. If it is, it must be happening on some glacial level <laughs> that, that that is moving in thousand year cycles. 
You know, you've been doing... So I'd have to, if I was the mayor of the city of Detroit, I'd have to attract more Dan Gilbert. Exactly. You'd other, have to. You'd other have cities. to. How do you do that? How do you go out and get a billionaire? I mean, I'd come well, you don't. For a first while, of all, yeah. you don't let... You see, Dan Gilbert didn't do anything just altruistically. No. Um, and I, I never neither really... Did I never understood that that business anyways, the idea of selling poor people mortgages on the on the level that he's selling them with the rocket mortgage. I don't understand the sustainability of that, notwithstanding that all those young kids you see in Detroit are, are walking around right. and they're employees of his, which isn't bad. Um, but uh, you've got to have, uh, uh, you've got to make it more attractive, and you've got to prevent him. What he did is they sold him basically downtown Detroit in return. Right. They, he didn't do this altruistically, like I said. He didn't do this for nothing. He bought these things at at literally rock-bottom prices. The idea was to flip them. Right. Which is, I mean, not a bad idea, except if you've cornered the market on 100 or 200 properties, which is what he has. Exactly. And now he's sitting on them, and that assumes that the market's going to be there. That assumes that people are going to come in and buy it. Right. If they don't, he goes bankrupt, because the only way he sustains... All of the purchases of property that he made in the city of Detroit is he's got to have a cash cow like none you've ever seen, which I understand he does with Rocket Mortgage. But if that petered out, the whole thing would collapse. Right. And that's right. what's that's potentially what's going to happen to the city of Detroit. And you, you know where you see it right now? All these closures of restaurants. Right. The uh, We were on a cycle, and we were clearly on an upward cycle. And everything, and in the face of a, an economy that's done fairly well, right? We're we're going in the other direction. All of these restaurants are closing. So the wow. restaurants are the canary in the coal mine in in Detroit. Yeah, in Detroit, to see what's happening in the city of Detroit. That's exactly right. We're not on the upward spiral, and it's in part connected with Gilbert's health and Gilbert's vitality, and the fact that nobody else has come in. So we're just waiting. Everyone seems to be sitting around just hoping Gilbert will emerge his old self. It's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. And it's just typical of the city of Detroit and the state of Michigan. We have a dearth of leadership. Tell me the last great leader that came out of this, inspirational leader that came out of this state ever. I mean, I realize that they're, they're not coming around very much anywhere, any place, any time. Look at right. the presidential races. They're not inspirational leaders at all. We're just looking for somebody to take, you know, a Who? clown out, an orange clown. Who do you think the last inspirational leader was in Michigan? Henry Ford? In or, Michigan? Yeah. Well, you, the deuce, you mean the second, not well, the first? The first, I don't know. I'm not, I, I think part of the problem in Michigan is we've never really had that. And that's why Detroit was once a great city and went so far down so fast because right. of the fact that, I mean, could how did that happen? How in God's name? Did anybody allow that to happen? And then we've had, what, 20 or 30 years of leadership, quote unquote, in the uh, state of Michigan where they've tried to drain all economic and political power from eastern Michigan and put it over in Grand Rapids. Isn't that insane, too, that you, that you, that you uh, deprive the, the state of its economic engine in the name of politics? Who did that? Rick Snyder is our governor. Okay, Jennifer Granholm ran away. Okay, right. John Engler, Jesus. What we've we've uh, 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 Bill Milliken actually actually who is the most decent right Human guy, being. probably most competent guy who uh, got there relatively by accident. George Romney probably was the most inspira could be inspirational. He right. he wasn't bad in that sense. He had been a you know a uh, uh, you know the leader of uh, the American Motor Corporation, and he. He was used to getting what he wanted, and uh, he was uh, slightly altruistic. He didn't appear to be right. corrupt in any he way. St he started the income form. tax in Michigan. Yeah. So, so I mean, but all these Republicans, if they, if they, if, 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 if what's his name, uh, Nixon started, uh, uh, you know, uh, environmental, environmental. Protection. right? Protectionist. Yeah. It was a different environmental part. protection agency. Well, why are the Democrats so weak? I mean, now we have a Demo Democrats in office. Emasculated, terrible. Well, what do you mean by emasculated? Emasculated. They're 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 nothings. They're nothings. They don't know why is Jennifer or what's her name? She Gretchen might as well Whitmer. Jennifer Whitmer. Gretchen. Why is she the, the 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 mayor, the governor? Why? Who is she? Where is she? 
I understand her dad ran Blue Cross Blue Shield. Did he? She the was a legislator for a lot of years. Wasn't that the money? Yeah. Well, but why? I mean, what what qualified her? Well, she served in the legislature, yeah, and well, she had a law degree, and that's pretty much well, what she did prior to... Uh, a law degree? Yeah. Oh, okay. But, uh, but uh, again, you're saying she... she this, she should not, Shouldn't she know how to run things, being in both the styles? She may know how to run them, but she's not a great leader. There's a difference between knowing how to things work, and if you spend a few years there, I imagine you understand how Lansing worked. But there's a difference between that and being a great leader. But I, su I suspect that people who have that quality would not want to sacrifice themselves anymore for that because it would be uh, uh, thankless, utterly and completely thankless. You thought about it once upon a time. I thought about it a lot, but it's thankless now, and I wouldn't want it. I mean, if Trump really ruined it for me. Right. He ruined it for me. Well, you know, you've had this amazing career, malpractice attorney. You were, you helped. I'm not a malpractice attorney. I happen to handle you handle practice, malpractice, uh, uh, but cases. I handle all, uh, all injury of, cases all injury over the cases. United States. I mean, to, to cubbyhole me as a malpractice attorney, that's, but, well, I don't think that's correct because that's but, about less than half of what I do. But you've been involved in politics. You were at the forefront of a the huge national issue with Jack of Orkin 30, 30 years ago. Yeah, we created and, that and we're responsible for hospice. People right. don't uh, understand that absent what Jack did and what we did together in the 90s, the, the hospice, which allows you now to take as much uh, narcotics as you want and put yourself under, would never have existed. That's exactly what Kevorkian was doing. He just did it in one injection, but right. it was exactly the same. So he really he really created he the it. hospice m movement. He did it, exactly, single-handedly. And uh, how will history remember him? Good, very good, a lot better than the people who imprisoned him. They will be re remembered. I he used a word. He used to use the word benighted. I never knew what it right. meant, but it means like from the Stone Age, really. Right. Uh, and he said these people are benighted, and they are. Well, what are you gonna? You've done all this. You must have other things you want to do yet. Well, I got a hotel in the Caribbean. Right? But, but, that kind of gives me some satisfaction that I built it from the ground up. And it's, well, you are the economy of the becoming, island of Anguilla. It, no, I'm not. But uh, <laughs> I'm contributing a, a great amount of money to it, and uh, uh, I like my family, and I like the trajectory. Of, I really like, I mean, most people don't like what I do in terms of practicing law. Most people who become lawyers don't like being lawyers. They don't like the conflict. They don't like the amount of time you have to put in. They don't like the amount of work that you have to do with relatively little remuneration notwithstanding what some people think. And I really like being a trial lawyer. I mean, I think maybe I was born to do this, and um, I don't want to say that there's nothing else I could do, but I there is very little else that I want to do. You like being so, the man in the arena. I like doing what I do. I like having my own law firm. I like having my own cases. I like being able to pick the cases. I like the fact that people come to me and I get to choose which cases I think are right, which cases are righteous, uh, and I get to try to do justice. And the last, the last avenue that we have to ultimate freedom, democracy, justice, is the jury trial, which they've been trying to take away for a long time. Interestingly enough, though, I think um, because Trump is such a sociopath. He hasn't latched on to that part of the Republican agenda, which was the the the, the true Republican agenda. Well, the nefarious agenda was to make this an oligarchy so that the moneyed class controls everything, and you do away with jury trials and have judges, you know, appointed by the governor or the president decide right. everything. And to do away with that, I think. Trump is such a sociopath. He kind of likes the idea of that because he was so litigious. Right. That they've kind of left that part of our freedom alone. Because yeah, God help us, because the, the Republicans have, have for years targeted, um, well, they say trial lawyers, but it's not about trial lawyers. It's about juries. They don't want people to decide issues. They want themselves to They want to be able to fix the deck. Right. And I like that. So why would I want to do anything? And I'm, I'm, I'm saying any time that I 
thought about it, I'd have to give up the thing I like the best. It's like, you know, I know people give up some food for Lent, but I don't want to give up my, my whole career for Lent. Right. I do. I, <laughs> a lot Maybe longer, a few weeks. A lot longer than that. Any final words of wisdom as we enter final, this election? I hope I'm not. not and and we run final for time. this pro- yeah, podcast yeah, only. This for podcast. Lent. Yes. Okay. F- final words as we face another election, another election year. Final words? Yeah, you, you said what? Well, you came up with the slogan. Well, one, for, yeah, a clear vision for America, 2020, a clear vision for America, which I copyrighted too. And I noticed some people have wanted to, to take that away. I, if, if I had my druthers, what I'd like to do is, in the old days, they used to have a favorite son. Right. And I'd like to be a spoiler and run for president just here in Michigan and then control it because I think what's going to end up, honestly, what I'm looking at is that we may not have a nominee going into the convention, which will be very interesting. That's right. Very interesting. First time in 68 years. And if yeah. that happens, then, you know, Katie bar the door. And then That's right. Somebody who you may not even suspect could could uh, end up being they, the, After the, the first candidate. ballot, they can pick anybody. They can pick Al Gore. They pick you. It, uh, right. They can do whatever they want. But that was one thing that I was toying with. But, right. Uh, that that's a distinct possibility because I don't see how um, coming out of Iowa, coming out of uh, New Hampshire, coming out of South Carolina, that there's going to be a. Uh, I think that that's going to be uh, Sanders, uh, uh, booted judge or Warren coming out of of the, the two states, and then South Carolina I think is clearly going to be Biden, and then uh, Bloomberg is is I mean he's going to own. Super Tuesday, and he he could. So if they come out of there like that, wow, that'll be pretty interesting. So, so no one will have a majority going into the convention well, in July. Yeah, and I don't. I, also, here's one other thing. Let me one other observation. The news, me, you know, all I watch is MSNBC. I watch CNN, and I sometimes turn on Fox to make sure they're not soliciting guns. You know, right. to do another revolution, just to keep them honest because i used to watch you know like religious guys too like jim baker to right. make sure they weren't asking for guns because they would have if they of could course. they were just trying to rob your money you know right. um, and i look at fox sort of as the as the progeny of 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 these criminal uh, ev- evangelists um but uh, they cover the 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 political arena like it's a sporting event that's right it's so ridiculous it's so it's like the super bowl it's a sporting event who's winning who's it doesn't even work like that but they can't stop themselves because it's all about ratings i saw that uh rachel maddow trounced fox on this live part of interview they're so happy about that i'm happy about it too but i think overall fox has overwhelmingly greater numbers oh, they than, do than MSNBC, MSNBC because right. they're, every bar you go into is Fox on it. Exactly. It doesn't have NS, MSNBC. The only difference is when there's real news, like a major disaster, then people watch CNN. Because they cover. Because they cover news. Yeah. The others <laughs> don't. So it, it looks like, to, when I watch Fox, it looks like pop news. It looks like some kind of art. It, it, if they could have cartoons on it, they'd they just <laughs> as soon have cartoons. So leave us with a projection. Who's going to, who will be the next pre- president? Who will be the next president? A year from today, who's going to be in office? I don't know. I, if I was going to, if you're a betting man, then go with the money. Bloomberg. Go with the money. Bloomberg. Yeah. No. If you're a betting man, not that I support him more than I support right. Biden or right. somebody else, but uh, if you're a betting man, and, and a Trump, woman. Right. And uh, Trump's going to lose. Trump, no. no well, I, I hope. Right. The only hope he has is is the economy and every... And and racism and and economy will trump everything. Well, I, I right. use those words advisedly. He's ruined the word for everything the English language. Else. Yeah. I know. I know. Well, we'll keep our fingers. What was crossed. his real name too? By the way, he used to be. Uh, what was his grandfather's name? Who was kicked out of Germany? Something like Trump or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, his grandfather was. Everyone should read the the book, The Making of Donald Trump. Who made him? Um, well, he made him. He made himself, but his grandfather was a criminal crook. He, yeah, he, got he was always getting in trouble. He, yeah. he, they they wouldn't let and him come back. His dad clearly was in the Nazi. Got caught, you know. Not the Nazis, the Ku Klux Klan. Ku Klux Klan. He, he was arrested at a yeah. Ku Klux Klan rally yeah. and mysteriously got out. Woody Guthrie wrote a song about his father. I know. Father, I know. Uh, but being so because racist the racist, player. you know, with the uh, the uh, the apartment houses, right? And then 
And of course, Roy Cohn was his mentor. Yeah, well, I'm not sure he was his mentor. He was a facilitator. Trump always wanted somebody like that. And he's got other people like that now, right. very similar to that. Not quite as smart. I'm not sure how smart Cohn was. Oh, Dershowitz is very smart. True. I was thinking of Giuliani. No, no. Giuliani is a fool. How, why, why anybody thought that guy was bright? <laughs> he's not just senile. He's goofy. But do you think a lot of these people end up in prison? Who? No, not with Barr. Um, if, if a Democrat takes over. See, I fear what, tr- what, see, nobody went to jail as a result of that uh, debacle that happened in 2008 because Obama decided that he was not going to engage right. in retribution. And I'm afraid that you Democrats... You mean the inside the banks, the yeah, insider trading. right, yeah. right, because it was clearly a criminal enterprise. Right. Nobody, nobody... One guy jail. did, one fairly minor level guy yeah. went. Well, and the Democrats are likely to do that again. Say, yeah. oh, well, we'll let bygones be bygones. But people like Barr should not be forgiven. I, I don't think so. Well, this has been incredibly interesting as always. Has it? It has. How interesting. I so. Well, probably more than watching CNN. I think so. I'm, I'm just asking you questions. I mean, I know I asked you as many questions as you asked me, but I'm just good. asking you questions I think about because I'm not seeing any answers, you know? That's I mean, true. I know people like you. I know you, and I want to know, for instance, what, what, how, how does Gilbert look? You know, and we've got a news media. He, own, he owns the city of Detroit. The news media won't report on how he is. Well, the fact that he hasn't been seen in public since May, right, or that the media, except maybe once and they didn't report it. You the mean fact, for a whole year for, now? Yeah, almost, almost a year. Almost a year. Yeah. I think that sort of answers the question. It, it does, but it, but it also reveals, I mean, it, what job does the media have? in that. I well, mean, you've been part of the media right. for a long time. Don't right. they have some responsibility? Well, you would think so, especially because of his, if he was the owner of a mom and pop company. Right. I mean, you wouldn't fine. intrude but, in his privacy, but, but that has nothing to do with what right. I'm talking about. We're talking about a guy who literally owns a significant majority of the real estate in the city of Detroit, and because of his uh, uh, investment in terms of jobs, and he owns it solely alone, uh, he could bring down the city. So Bring it down is good. And tomorrow. You, well, you wonder, every time you fill up your car with gas, you've got commercials for Rocket Mortgage. Who's running this now? Who's determining who gets those mortgages and who, who's right. not? And he'll say, well, I've, we have employees. You know, they got Jay Farner and everything. These right. are nice guys. But they're not owners of that corporation, no, and making... they're not going to stick their neck out. Now, a company can run on a week on autopilot, but not for eight months. That'll It'll collapse. It'll, yeah. It will collapse unless he's a lot better than I think he is. Well, we hopefully will find out soon. Well, again, Jeffrey, thanks for making time for us today. If you're charging us your normal hourly rate, we're you all You can't afford it. I know that. I own the whole building. If I'm charging you my hourly rate, then I own this entire building, and I kind of like this building. So uh, uh, uh-oh. You well, owe it to me now. Well, I'll make, sure, I'll make sure the sinks are clean in the bathroom. But, but you have been in important spots. I've never charged by the hour, yeah. by the way. You don't charge. Well, you're, you charge in contingency fees. Right, because that requires me to become involved in the case, and I've got a piece of the action. And you got a stake in winning. Me. you got a stake in winning. That's correct. That's what motivates me. I've never had a paycheck. I've only uh, eaten what I killed, even though I'm not a hunter. God what? forbid somebody compare me to Ted Nugent. We'll let the world know that they always knock you as being anti-business, anti-capitalist. Utter, cap- complete cap- nonsense. Capitalism in its purest form. Absolutely. You're, 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 That's you're, just nonsense. It, uh, you've got it. You, you've got they it. haven't stake, seen my investment. Stake in what you do, and if you win, you win. If you lose a case, you get nothing. That's right. Isn't so, that pure capitalism? It seems to me. It seems to me Entrepreneurship? Entrepreneurship? Isn't that way it's supposed to be? I would think so. You know, I think that one of the best tributes to you I ever heard was years ago in the old Golden Mushroom restaurant. That guy, I which I own, by the way. But you own there. You you yeah. you bought their grill in the basement. And right. I tried. I to, own the bar. I tried to get there a couple of drinks the other day, but they threw me out. <laughs> and, uh, but this guy said, "I hate Jeffrey Feiger. He's a nah, he's a buffoon. But if I ever got in trouble, I'd hire him." Right. Which is uh, probably the finest tribute. Well, I'm to not a buffoon. Le- legal. No. I'm, I might hire. Try to hire me too, but unfortunately. Uh, I'm not available to most petty criminals. <laughs> that's, well, so a lot of them will be sad. <laughs> well, that's it for today. But You can catch up with both my writing and any essays and podcasts you might have missed on my website and blog, LessonburyInc.com. That's ink is an ink pen. Please go to my website and subscribe. The price is right and what I'm worth, absolutely free. If you'd like to help keep these podcasts going, I'd also be thrilled if you'd send a contribution to me via PayPal on my blog, LessonburyInc.com, or via check through snail mail to Zing Media Group, 186 North Main Street in Plymouth, 48170, or message me on my Facebook. And listen to more episodes, come back, tell your friends. 
This is Jack Lesmere with the Politics and Prejudices podcast with the one and only Jeffrey Figer. See you again next time. I first met Jeffrey Figer at a routine press conference after one of Jack Kevorkian's early assisted suicides when I went to cover it for the New York Times. I quickly saw that what was going on was as much about Figer as it was about Kevorkian. Yes, the ability of medicine to keep people breathing long after they'd lost any quality of life it was and is a major problem, and people's right to determine when they'd had enough is an important issue that we still need to talk and think about. Kevorkian intended to make us face this and had the courage to do what it took to get our attention. But Jeffrey Figer made it possible for him to do so. Had it not been for Figer, Kevorkian would have been thrown in prison after his first suicide 30 years ago when he helped a woman die who was in the early stages of Alzheimer's disease. Figer pointed out that Michigan then actually didn't have a law against assisting in a suicide, and the charges were dropped. More suicides followed, and so did a series of sensational trials. Well, much of the public missed was the sheer, many-layered brilliance of Figer as an attorney in those trials. For strategic reasons, he succeeded in making himself appear the buffoon, while his client came across as a kindly, intellectual Dr. Marcus Welby. As someone who had access behind the scenes, I can tell you the truth, it was pretty much the opposite. Kevorkian also extensively videotaped each patient, and those tapes made it clear that these were often highly intelligent people whose wish to end their suffering was sadly rational. They're also an indictment of an often too callous medical profession and doctors who were all too often not interested or not willing to help them manage pain. After juries refused to convict Kevorkian in five straight trials, doctor-assisted suicide, at least as practiced by Jack Kevorkian, became de facto legal in metropolitan Detroit. At that point, however, Kevorkian fell into the self-destructive pattern he'd shown all his life. He fired Figer, flamboyantly performed euthanasia, taunted prosecutors, and decided to defend himself in court. That destroyed his movement and got him eight years in prison. Jeffrey Figer's career, on the other hand, flourished. Yes, he got beaten in the landslide when he ran for governor. When it came to electoral politics, he was naive. But if you go back and read his speeches or his positions on the issues in that campaign, I think you'd be surprised as to how much on the money he was about our problems, most of which are as bad or worse than ever. While he's an absolutely brilliant attorney, I'm not sure he'd ever be as effective in the gray and frustrating world of politics and government. But I'm glad he's there to goad the politicians from time to time. I've watched too many candidate debates in my life, but I can tell you this, I'd pay to see one between Donald Trump and Jeffrey Fine. I'm Jack Lessenberry. Look forward to seeing you again soon.